about what we're going to do, but you're not listening. I'm recording. No, don't. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ah, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Then I shall speak. Don't even give me a chance to clean my damn throat. Welcome to Flicks of Doom, the official movie podcast of Geeks of Doom. I'm Empress Eve, and here today with me is my little marshmallow crispy, Justin Vactor. Woo! Who pays <laughs> no attention to me whatsoever, let me talk to myself, and doesn't pay attention when I say goodbye on the phone. So anyway, on this episode, we have a very special guest with us, Josh Brunting of Gordon and the Whale, DVD Snapshot, and Criterion Cast. Welcome, Josh. Hey, how is everyone? Josh is on 50 million sites, just the way Justin is on 50 million podcasts. So, you guys should yeah. be roommates. You guys should be roommates. I, I guess we should, yeah. Yeah, and you could do you could do the sleeping video podcast. Sleeping together. video podcast. Right, yeah. eight hours of you guys awesome. just sleeping, and then you could you know spend 17 hours editing it. So, it would be that's, awesome. Be great. Yeah, that's the most we'll popular sy- podcast right there. <laughs> you know, we'll syndicate it. We'll syndicate it. Awesome. Awesome. To do we got? I, I'm sure I can get Gordon and the whale to do it. You know, yes. Um, because Justin, you know, he has all the time in the world. Don't worry about it. I get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> on this week's episode, we will be discussing the 1986 film Highlander, which is one of my favorite films of all time. And so, so there. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> because I did not want to go to the movies this week because none of these movies were enticing enough for me to go. I <laughs> decided that I thought we should discuss Highlander, which just came out for the very first time Blu-ray. Now, Justin, I know that you this is the first time you've seen Highlander. And Josh, how about you? Is this a movie you've known about? Have you, you know, watched it a lot or have you never seen it before now? I've seen it only a couple times. I didn't see it until uh, college, actually. So it's it's. Only, I've only seen like it a couple times. Five minutes ago. Uh, this is my fourth year in college. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to act like college was so many years ago. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. Full disclosure here. That's right. Josh is a little bitty baby, but he's I, very I am, well versed in film. I, I so try. much so that he can write about it for 27 websites. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's got so much so, film yes. talk in him. Forget it. Anyone looking to hire Josh? Because he's free. Really. He, he can, he can yeah. squeeze it. Oh, and by the way, anyone who needs Justin to edit a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. will make time. They'll make time. Don't worry about we've it. We've got time to kill. We've got, we'll sleep when we're dead. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Tonight they sleep in hell. Okay, okay people? So. <laughs> now, <laughs> the film came out in 1986. It starred Christopher Lambert, Clancy Brown, Sean Connery, and Roxanne Hart. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I loved the hell out of this film. And when it came out uh, before certain people on this podcast were born, and while well, certain <laughs> other people were infants, I... <laughs> I got, me, the grandmother, had gone to see it, okay, uh, and I loved it. Okay, now I'll say the poster that I saw at the time was uh, Christopher Lambert's character, and he was wearing jeans and a trench coat, and it was modern day, and he had a sword, and I remember thinking, like, what the hell is this movie? Like, Why is it called Highlander, but here's this, like, regular dude with a trench coat and a sword, and what in hell is this movie about? I don't know what the hell is going on. So, but then I heard that like Queen did the music for it, and yes. that it had, <laughs> it had this whole thing, uh, you know, flashback sequences to uh, the 1500s in Scotland, and then you see Christopher Lambert. He's got the long hair and this and that, and like this was the 80s. So, like any movie with a guy with long hair, that it was like I was going. So, long hair, swords, rock music. And that, and that, that's it. That's all it had to have, really, to get me to go see it, you know? So Long I was in. Long don't care. What'd you say? Long hair don't care. Well, I do. 
Okay, so these these were like very simple requirements for me, and so <laughs> it, it you know fit the bill, and I completely completely loved it. And then it came out on video, and I remember my mom went to like a video store, and she found it like on sale. I think the video store was like closing, or they had some kind of sale, and she got me the VHS copy with the. Remember how the old ones were like I forget what they're called, but they were like big and white. The, the case for it, you know what I mean? Like it was like that clamshell whatever case for them. She got me it for 10 bucks. And man, I watched the hell out of this VHS cassette. And my friends used to come over and we used to have big Highlander screenings. And I remember my mom would sit and watch it and she'd go, is this a film with flashback? Like she didn't know what the hell was going on in the movie at all. You know, she just kept asking, is this a forward flashback? And yeah, it was like, but I, I, you know, like, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm very curious. Justin, this was his first time seeing it, and I had highly recommended it to him. And then he tweeted that he fell asleep during the movie, which oh, man. He, he does fall asleep during, you know, 50% of the things he watches. So you can't really take that as, you know, if he liked it or not. But then he said something about how he was an hour and 50 minutes into the film, and he asked, when does it get good? You know? So... <laughs> Justin, I'm very curious to your your experience <laughs> with this film. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about it? This is a movie that I believe you had to watch it when it was first released to get the full Highlander effect. Because watching it today in 2010 in a post-Dark Knight world, it's very hard to take Highlander seriously. Not only from an acting standpoint, but from a fighting and an action standpoint as well. Because if you watch the sword battles and fights, they look very laughable and cheesy today, uh, especially comparing it to something like the lightsaber battle in episode three, my favorite prequel, and different things that you would see today. I think we're just a lot more sophisticated in our action scenes. And we, as audiences and viewers, we demand a lot more today than we did in 1986. Now, I watched. Now you, I was going to say, though, you are a lover of 80s movies. This is correct. So, how is this different for you? Because normally, when you. I mean, you sat through just one of the guys, okay? Which, yeah. Come on. I love that movie too, but like, let's face it, you know, I mean, you love that movie and like, talk about not so great quality. So how come? No, there's no sword battles in just one of the guys. It's a lot easier to have a high school There should have been though. There should have yeah. been. It's a lot easier to have. They can only just be one of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier for me to buy into an 80s uh, high school than it is for me to watch a sword battle. So that's so wait, so different. wait. You can believe that a girl can dress up as a boy and so easily go to another high school and just enroll. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> yeah. They could do that and live their lives with a sock in their pants. Yeah. Okay, and fool everybody. But you can't believe <laughs> that two men can like can sword fight with real swords, like not even magic swords. They're real swords. They're just fighting like regular. People, you can't you can't get on board with that. Like you, you can't suspend disbelief for something that's real. Like you know, real thing. No, Eve. Obviously, you've never seen "She's the Man" with Amanda Bynes because oh, here we go, Amanda Bynes. Got to go back to Amanda Bynes. The beautifully, wonderfully talented Amanda Bynes easily pulled that stunt off. So I can believe that a lot easier than I can believe an old man fighting with a young man and training him. And then Sean Connery running on the beach like he was in Rocky. And I don't know what awesome. was going on in that awesome. scene. I just had to laugh out loud. The quickening! <laughs> oh, man. I watched the director's cut, which was on the Blu-ray, that Eve strongly recommended I purchase. Instead of rent or, you know. No, actually, I told else. you to rent it, and you couldn't get it on rental, so that's not my fault. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have emails to prove it, no, okay? No. I'm waving emails my finger back and forth. And you can't see okay? it right now. But the director's cut is based on the longer European cut, and it's about eight minutes longer than the theatrical U.S. version. I'm wondering 
Eve, if you have a preference. I like the director's cut better because there's a few scenes. It explains uh, about Connor's past and there's a whole World War II sequence where he first meets Rachel. And so it it makes a lot of sense now. You know who this woman is, who he confides in, like, because he's yeah, you know, how many people can he confide in in his life? You know, so it's like why mm. this person, and that's not his. Like, it's obviously not his girlfriend, lover, or whatever it is. So you get to find out that whole thing. So I like it just because it it adds more to it. Um. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Which Josh? Which version have you seen? I I unfortunately do not have a Blu-ray player. I'm I'm just a. a oh, here we go. We have to stop the what? podcast, and it's ruined. Every I, week someone comes on and says they don't have a Blu-ray player. And then we have I'm, to stop I'm a poor stuff. college kid. I apologize. Ah. Uh, we have to stop getting these poor college kids to come on. <laughs> oh, man. Because no, you know, Justin, yeah. Justin, I don't think he's ever going to talk to you again until you get the Blu-ray player. So. I know. I, I know. I know. I, I shame Justin. I shame him. Eve, <laughs> you know what to get him for Christmas now. <laughs> yes, get, ready. get ready for emails and tweets from Justin where he asks... Why aren't you my friend? All because you don't have a Blu-ray player. You, you just wait. You just wait. He will shame you into getting a Blu-ray player. I, he I, will call I, your you parents, will. okay? Oh, and get them to get you a Blu-ray player. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so which version? I mean, I don't know if the director's cut came out on DVD. I'm not sure. I know it, it was it, out on VHS, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it, I do not believe it has. It. I've seen, I believe there's two or three different DVD versions of it, mm-hmm. ranging anywhere from really, really poor to just kind of yeah. meh. And they, they, have the, they have the all right one on Netflix with the eight minutes you, 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 mm-hmm. you said the, the director's cut has. It, I definitely still really, really dig the hell out of this movie. Like, I, I, I understand what, what Justin, what you're saying about it kind of being a little, the, the fights being a little clunky and, and unbelievable. But really, it, it, it's kind of it kind of it kind of enhances the the overall B movie experience that I think now you kind of get out of Highlander. Like I, I've been going through the the Roger Corman cult classics mm-hmm. collection that, that that Shout Factory has, and this would fit perfectly alongside the the, the more modern kind of Roger Corman releases, and I and I, I appreciate it for that. It's got. It's got an amazing, a few amazing songs from Queen. I mean, you can't go wrong with Queen. Come on, come on. Mm-hmm. I have yeah. to, I have to disagree with you on that oh, point. You're so, oh, oh you're wrong. he's killing me. He's killing me. You're wrong. It, no, oh, so good. I, no, I'm not saying anything about the quality of Queen because I like Queen, but I don't think they fit in this movie, especially when I. I'm thinking of a manly action film where there's sword fighting and horseback riding, and then I hear Freddie Mercury's voice, and I don't think manly. I think quite the opposite. So that just does not work for me. Just doesn't work. Uh, they're the princes huh. of the universe. Yeah, okay? man. <laughs> you want to be king. Okay? Uh, they're the queens of the universe. I don't That's know what the hell queen. you're talking about. Okay, I if. I, I was on a phone. I'd slam it down right now. That's why their okay. name is Queen Eve, not listen, Prince. There's only listen. one Prince. <laughs> Let's not go there. The purple okay? one. They're an awesome rock band, and and yeah. as I said in my review, okay, they their songs made this film. That's how I felt. Come on, what about Who Wants to Live Forever? You that oh, it's so good. Well, that didn't cheer you up when you see. Connor and Heather living their long life and she's growing old and he's staying the same and come on you have no soul okay you have no heart Justin go back to sleep yeah I don't have a heart <laughs> but I have ears and when I hear Queen over oh. these visuals oh, so good I just can't get I no. can't get into it nope nope wrong you are wrong. yeah you're wrong <laughs> you're just wrong <laughs> I got to go get some of Justin's tweets that he sends to me that have pictures that say wrong. And if this I'm was an go. ice skating movie, I could hear Queen uh, over it. But I serious, no. um, <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, there was a Will oh, Ferrell God. ice skating. Blades of Glory. I Blades love of Blades of Glory. Glory. There was a Queen song in there. I'll, I'll take it in there over this one. Yeah, you, you messed up. Really My boy messed up. Leonard Malton. Gave the film one and a half stars, saying it yes, had an interesting premise, 
making silly and boring former rock video director Mok- what? Mokali's? Mokay. Mokay's relentlessly showy camera moves may cause you to reach for the Dramamine. Gotta agree with you, Leonard, on that F one. Ask him. Yeah. F him. But, <laughs> but see, I, that's that's kind of one of the reasons I really dig dig the movie. It's kind of a time capsule of that era because if you look at Mul- uh, Mulcahy's like music videos, like mm-hmm. uh, "Hungry Like the Wolf," "Like a Wolf," or "Rio" that he did for uh, Duran Duran, like they're very kind of '80s style, like mm-hmm. stylized music videos, and I think he takes that '80s music video style. And and puts it in this movie. I Clancy Brown is amazing. Yeah, Sean come on, Con- Justin. The Kirk come on, is, come on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Sean, he scared the yeah. crap out of me when I saw that movie. I was so yeah, scared man. of him. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uh, right. a good villain. <laughs> Let's just say I wasn't scared of him when I saw him sticking his tongue out and running around. <laughs> 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 Strangely, but. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Wait, wait, see when the Kurgan seeks you out. No, there's okay? a different time. Right? When you, when, as I said, in a post Dark Knight world, when you're viewing this film, it is not the same as if I was viewing this in 1986. So I can understand its place in history. And but, if but, I was watching okay. it in 86. But um, Josh wasn't even born in 86, okay? Yeah, and he can appreciate it. He likes it. Yeah. What I just said I appreciate it. What are you talking but, about? But no, is it no, really- you're making fun of the music. You don't like the villain. You don't like anyone. You don't even like Sean Connery. Is it is it really fair to comp- like to to take down a movie that that for that didn't have the Dark Knight in its world? Yeah. Like I, I don't I don't necessarily <laughs> think that's a fair Batman argument. and Robin. Does anyone well, remember what? Batman and Robin? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, yeah, <laughs> so what does that mean? That means you don't like Tron. Right, because I've that's not outdated. seen Tron, oh, but well, I've I heard. I can't wait for you to see it because you yeah. gotta hate it. I've heard nothing but bad things about Tron. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone liking Tron and telling me you Tron was a good like, movie. Well, I again had the experience of seeing it when it came out, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Tron!" You know, the visuals, everything it was great. But mm-hmm. no, yeah, but that's the thing about making a visual, a special effects-driven movie. Mm-hmm. Once the technology becomes outdated, then you have nothing left to stand on. That's for, I haven't seen Tron, but from everything I hear. That's strictly a visual effects and movie, won't and like it. there's nothing left but after you'd strip that away. Highlander isn't a visual effects movie. It's an action movie with fantasy. Oh, and speaking of, there's some corny visual effects in here with the lightning, and then people's heads getting chopped off, and that looking uh, very phony. What do you want them to really decap- <laughs> no, like, I don't know if they can't really decapitate someone very and make strange. it look real. No? Very strange. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand. I don't know. He's like killing me. He's going to insert. You're killing me softly. Since I'm the editor, I'm going to insert a line from the movie and let everyone out there be the judge. So everybody, take a listen to this. Give me it. Give me it. Give me it. Don't move, pal. Don't even breathe. You let me know, everyone out there, what, what did you think? Were you watching, by listening to that, were you watching Highlander or were we watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? So just just weigh in on that, my friends. Now, I will say the things that I did like about the movie was Raiden from Mortal Kombat, riding on a horse. I enjoyed that. And enjoyed James Bond with a mustache running on the beach. And awesome. my favorite part of the movie was Lex Luthor. I enjoyed that. What about Christopher Lambert's naked booty? That was a. I, uh, like that. I didn't enjoy his booty, but that girl got quite what did you naked. What did you think of her? Oh, she was looking good in the dark. <laughs> Actually, there was a couple girls. He had two nip slips in this movie, so I there enjoyed were two? It for that. Yeah, there, there was were one. Two nip slips? The Scottish girl and then the other girl in the modern times. Both of them oh. showed off some areola, so that was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, I did enjoy the 1985 Doritos container, which I got this <laughs> chance to see that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I did have some uh. some questions about the movie. Okay, let's go for it. Why is Sean Connery training him? Okay, here's why. Because the Kurgan 
is the dangerous one. And if he wins the prize, then all humanity is won't be safe anymore. And so basically he's like, look, he's trying to get all the other immortals to kind of defeat the Kurgan first, and then they'll worry about killing each other. So that's why he, he went to Connor and he's like, you know, I'll tell it because he I guess he knew that the Kurgan was out to get Connor. Now, why the Kurgan is out to get Connor specifically, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> why he's like, hey, let me go after this one guy who has like no skills and doesn't know crap. And let me, you know, he's mine. You know, I don't know why. But I, I thought that was because really he's strange. Clancy Brown because he can. <laughs> Well, besides the fact that, well, the fact is, you know what I laughed about here? You get me to say something about it. What I laughed about is when they first meet on the battlefield and he stabs Connor and then the other clansmen like overcome him and he's like, another time, Highlander. And it's like, why? Like, why another time? Like, why don't you just kill those three guys who were like, came out, just kill them and go back to <laughs> killing, Con- like go decapitate Con- Like, wh- why does that have to be another yeah, time? Yeah, I didn't understand yeah. that one either. Well, Dave was like, well, you know, he can't let people know he's immortal. So he can't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can't overdo his immortality and his strength and everything. Like, he has to, he has to blend in as like a normal person. That was Dave's theory for it but i don't know about that i don't no, i don't know. understand well that, that and there would be no movie so mm-hmm. you know it's in the script you could say but i just always i always thought that was funny i was always like why why you don't just keep fighting you know yeah so, yeah as i said clancy brown's voice is my favorite part of the movie because i love him as lex Luthor oh, yeah. and <laughs> a number of other things so that was my favorite part was hearing his voice mm-hmm. and I had some other things as I was watching the movie. I took down some notes. Okay. So it opens in a wrestling match. Yeah. And so Christopher Lambert is just sitting there. And then there's a spotlight on his eyes for no apparent reason. He goes, <laughs> I, I guess he was drawn to the parking lot by that spotlight. And then he meets up with another guy. And that other guy is like an immortal too, right? Right. So they're fighting. The, that's in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, they're that's they're fighting. The the sprinklers go off, and then the other immortal starts doing backflips for no <laughs> apparent reason, and he just keeps backflipping. <laughs> and I was like, "Why is he doing that?" I know he does like nine or ten backflips. I didn't understand that part. Yeah, and I didn't either. <laughs> then <laughs> after they had their battle underneath Madison Square Garden, which I was listening to the director's commentary and he was saying that they filmed that in London and it was they just made yeah. it look like Madison Square Garden. Right. But the only thing I could think of when they got done was there's going to be a lot of angry wrestling fans coming down to see all of their cars <laughs> blown up. And they're going to be like, what just happened here? So that was on my mind. Uh, there, <laughs> there were a number of key scenes of dialogue that I enjoyed. I, I know what you liked. You include Don't that. move, pal. Well, okay. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> there was also when the prostitute comes to Clancy Brown's door, yeah. she says, I'm candy. Of course you are. Yeah. Okay, that was nice. Um, <laughs> oh, I love I, it. I had a, we talked to, or actually, I'm sorry, I talked to fellow Geeks of Doom writer Hunter Camp about this and he was telling me he likes the tv show a lot more than the movie really? what are your both of you well josh have you seen the tv show i grew up watching the tv show yeah i was i was gonna say that in in at the beginning but yeah i kind of kind of love the tv show i you mean i think it's, i would like the tv show more than the movie probably uh, it's probably but it's it's very it's very 90s in a way oh, and where no. this is where this is very very 80s that show is very 90s which i i, I think is for its better like it's better man mm-hmm. i really i personally i dig the show more than the film just because i i like having the the longer format of seasons to to draw the storyline yeah but I mean, I mean, it's on Netflix. Watch Instant, so you're really. Yeah, I've added the the first season to my Instant just to see how it is. And Hunter, yeah, was saying I, I think he, you'll dig it. Yeah, Hunter was saying he likes Duncan, the guy from the TV show, more than Connor. Yes, I do too. Yeah. 
Right. Well, I like the TV show. I never really got like really, really into it where I made sure I watched it every week. But I've seen a lot of episodes. I like it because I like the Highlander franchise. And But mm-hmm. my issue is this. Having seen Highlander when it first came out, when there was no sequels, no TV shows, no nothing. Um, <clears throat> you know, the whole thing about there can only be one. How many times in the movie do they there can only yeah. be one? There can only be That's the whole thing. There can only be one. And... Uh, then there is only one at the end. So to me, I won't even go into how I felt about Highlander 2 because that's, a, <laughs> that's an eight-hour podcast in and of itself, okay? And then all the sequels and finos and this and that. And, you know, I, you know my, my mindset was always like, I don't get it. Like, how could you make more when there can only be one? And, like, it took mm-hmm. me you know, probably 10 years to like, finally be like, okay, fine, fine. There's more than one, you know, uh, (laughs) you know, and deal with it. But the director talked about that on the commentary as well. Yeah. So, but I I can appreciate the the TV show probably a lot better than the sequels to the movie. That's for sure. The sequels were terrible. You know, as I was watching the movie, I thought this seems like a TV show because Every they would just have these random occurrences. Hey, remember that time we had a party back in the eighteen mm-hmm. hundreds? Yeah, let's go to a flashback and show that party that we had. And I was like, Are you talking about the duel? Yeah, I was like, this sounds like. I mean, th- this seems like okay. This is this week's episode. Yeah, remember when that happened? All right, we're gonna show that episode. Actually, I think they did have an episode like that in a TV show where they mm-hmm. went. I think it was like the seventeen hundred. They had the wigs on the white wigs. Yeah, I think they did that scene because they were trying to show you like him through the years you, you know uh-huh. not just the 1500s and then 1985 i think they were trying to show you like oh you know here's other things that happened with him and mm-hmm. i guess they also wanted to show you how he has been injured and harmed or uh, you know a- over the years and just uh you know like healed from it yeah so, i guess that's, that's what... interesting eve so you have any other questions uh why why did Clancy Brown put an old woman on his hood and drive around? <laughs> I, I didn't understand that part. And then there was that scene, speaking of the Queen soundtrack, there was that scene where he's in the car with, he takes the girl, okay, Clancy Brown has the female, and right. he's driving with her. Right and then now. it's like, that. St- talking about Josh's love of, surreal things and Darren Aronofsky. I thought Darren Aronofsky directed that car chase scene <laughs> where he's, he starts singing New York, New York, and then oh, yeah, Queen yeah. comes. I was like, what's going on? I'm on an acid trip. Ah, that was great. I love that it. That was weird. That was great. Uh, the, the final fight between Clancy Brown and Christopher Lambert, they fall through this window and there's the scene had been flooded previously to that, so they fall through, but none of the water from the top fell through it. I didn't understand that. Was I? Did I miss something? I don't know. Okay, you got you watched that, that again. Okay. And those are minor details, though. <laughs> yeah. Also, talking about the, you know, I was talking about the sword fighting and some of the action being a little cheesy earlier. I'm really sorry, but when I can see styrofoam rocks falling on the guy's heads, that really <laughs> takes me out of the movie. It's like obviously watching, not a fan of the original Star Trek. I was series. just about to say that that is the exact same way. It's like the old Batman TV show or the Star mm. Trek TV show. It's just, and he's like, "Why didn't they use real?" Rocks? I'm sure those they should have used real bricks. And I'm rocks. sure those <laughs> when they were viewed originally were. I mean, I remember my dad telling me, yeah, I thought this was real. I thought the special effects were real. And now my dad watching those saying, ha ha, I was such a fool for thinking wait, that. Wait, wait, here's the thing, though. I, I, think, I think part of the problem is is that as the quality of of what you're watching increases, you see these things more. Like, you know, when it was made and you went to go see it, yeah. you, it wasn't in HD, you know, it didn't have the clarity the way we do now. And that's why I feel like a lot of times when you get these older movies on Blu-ray, it, it like puts a spotlight on like special effects that obviously aren't today's special effects, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I was just watching a movie the other day that was relatively new. I can't think of what the hell the movie was I was watching, but 
I, I felt the same way where I was like, wow, this is a relatively new movie. And already it was like maybe three years old. And I'm like, already you could see, like the special effects, you could kind of see through them because now you're watching it on a Blu-ray on a high definition television and everything. So I think that's always going to be a problem. You know? And, and I, th- I think that's going to be a problem, particularly for, I, I think, 80s movies in particular, because there's something, there's something weird about the special effects that were used in the 80s, because they weren't quite like, like Harryhausen stop motion. They weren't quite CG. There's just, there's just something weird about 80s films in general, because be, I, I don't know why, but it's just because I've been, wa- like I said, I've been watching a few of the, the Corman 80s releases and they're. The the prints are the the transfers are nice, but they're just there's something off about them. Like they're not quite up to yeah. today's standards, which means they're kind. They look even kind of worse than they did on VHS or like early DVD releases. But I I, I can understand that, but I, I don't necessarily think it, it's a it's a legitimate kind of problem. I mean, it's a fine problem to have, but I wouldn't necessarily take the film down a notch for it. I'd say it's more kind of the era that it's from. Right. In general, so. Mm-hmm. Now, what w- what is the prize that he wins for for being the only one? He he knows the what everyone's knowledge. thinking. Yeah, he get ultimate knowledge. He knows everything. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was very strange to me. You didn't love that? The quickening <laughs> overcomes me. I just th- I know everything. The mythology I didn't think was very. I found like I thought like the potential for it was great, and I think that's why that there's been such a long series of things with movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, everything. I think there's a lot of stuff that people uh, kind of like Star Wars too. Like people can take from the mythology and add their own stories to it. But in the movie itself, I was confused about what mm-hmm. what the previous stories were and what this story was, and and like you said, the way that it ended. I thought that was the end. So how does it continue after this? Right. And I was looking at the synopsis for Highlander 2. Oh, and oh, oh, yeah. I don't know if I ever want to watch that. No, you don't. From you reading don't. that. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Although, it's like, Chell Justin to watch Highlander 2 probably his favorite movie, you know? Because <laughs> everyone who loves Highlander hates Highlander 2. It's Highlander 2 The Quickening, and if you ever heard people talking about sequels that they hate, you'll see that they'll say, like, such and such, The Quickening. Well, at least I do all the time. If there's a sequel I hate, <laughs> I just call it The Quickening. I'm like, oh, uh, you know, uh, do a little too The Quickening? You know, like, everything is The Quickening. So, uh, it's the ultimate in terrible sequels. Yeah. It's painful. It's painful. <laughs> but I think if you watch it, you'll see Virginia Madsen's butt or oh, okay. nipple or I something. I guess I will watch it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really funny. In that movie, it's like, I don't know, like, I don't, he gets her, like, so quickly, I don't even understand. Like, But no, I uh, that's a, psh, don't get me started. There's another part. I think I fell asleep during this part. Maybe you guys can explain. <laughs> okay. When Clancy Brown shaves his head and then he mm. comes and meets him. And he explains, he asked him why he cut his hair. What's that? At the church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He asked him why he cut his hair, and he said because he was in disguise. And that that was the explanation that I saw. Was there anything else other than, other than that, that explained why he cut his hair? I think it was, because didn't he, didn't he have the long hair when he, uh, stabbed, the uh the mar- the marine guy the army guy didn't he and like the- there was a description of him i think now i can't remember uh, exactly but i think he was like the police were looking for him interesting Maybe, i think that's why i think that's why i don't see if i was clancy brown i wouldn't be afraid of the police cuz i could just take them all out so it's hard for me to believe well, that no he's, he's immortal but he's not like you know, like, oh, you know, like he doesn't have the ultimate power, and you know, like, you know, he can't, like, just, oh yeah, I'm gonna kill everybody I come across. Like, you know, I mean, he's strong because he just happens to be strong, but he, yeah, he but it's just that he's I immortal. Thought, here's another thing, going back to the mythology. I thought every time he cut somebody's head off, he got their power. He got their knowledge. Oh, <laughs> he got okay, their knowledge. Right? <laughs> 
So he cut ate their brains and he got their knowledge. knowledge. All right. It's a zombie movie now. All right. So yeah. basically, had he killed Connor, he'd know how to herd sheep. Uh, you know, the, yeah. he'd know how to deal antiques. And he'd you know? know what haggis was. <laughs> he'd know what haggis is. Right, Sheep's exactly. stomach stuffed with meat and barley. Right. <laughs> that was another <laughs> gem of a dialogue moment for me. Yeah. So now, do you guys do you guys think this could be this could work for a reboot? Because last we heard, it is getting rebooted. So with with right. Justin Lin as the director. So, I, I mean, think is this would love a reboot? Yeah, I mean, Vinny. There's been rumors that Vinny Jones might be the Kurgan. Ooh. So, well, I'm what do you guys think about a reboot? I'm yeah. I'm kind of for it. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Yeah, Eve. Yeah. Nope. It's going to no be reboot. with modern special effects. It's yeah, gonna be, and in 10 years, I'll talk to you and you're about it. It'll be less <laughs> cheesy. Yeah. Yeah, easy. Yeah. No, no. Yep, I'm for it. Justin Lin is the man to do it. <laughs> Iron Man writers Art Markham and Matt Holloway doing the script. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the children want to reboot. Yay! <laughs> Grandma don't. Grandma yeah. don't want to reboot. That's like, that would be similar to Eve saying, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the Adam West Batman. I don't need Batman Begins or the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's not the yeah. same. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, not no. The same. <laughs> it's totally not. I'm like, happy no. with Batman and Robin. Woo! <laughs> Mr. Freeze is the best Batman and Robin best ever. ever. <laughs> Eve was Perfect afraid movie. of Mr. Freeze. He was so scary. Perfect movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess this brings us to the end of our Highlander discussion. Yay. And Justin is 100% wrong. I'm 100% right. And Josh, since he's on my side, is also 100% right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Josh, we thank you very much for joining us on this fun-filled episode tonight. You, it's been an honor. Oh, well, anytime. We'd love to have you come back and agree with me some more. Awesome. Uh, anyone who wants to send Justin hate mail, feel free to. <laughs> He's ready and willing to accept it. And I won't even ask him where people should send the hate mail because he'll just give you, like, Hunter Camp's email address. So. <laughs> Whatever you, you say, send- Jack, you are the master race. <laughs> You can, you can send Justin hate mail at news at geeksadoom.com. Just make sure you say, I hate Justin, in the subject line, and tell him how wrong he is about Highlander. You look like a woman, you stupid haggis. Oh, boy. Here we go. Justin, after you're done sleeping in hell tonight, why don't you tell everyone where they can find us on the internet? Well, you stupid haggis you can always go to <laughs> geeksofdoom.com and find all of our postings over 